Alright, this is FireMind and in this video I will show you how I managed to build a Chrome extension that uses machine learning to copy text right out of your YouTube video into your clipboard. So I do watch a lot of tutorials online because, you know, I like to learn. And when I do, I very often encounter code snippets like this one. Now, while I greatly appreciate the effort tutorial makers put into their videos, every time I encounter a piece of code like this one, which does not provide a link to download or copy it, I kind of feel violated. I really don't want to retype all of that code and I also don't think that simply retyping it will teach me anything. So how do I solve this? So recently AI or machine learning has been making quite a few headlines. So naturally, as a developer, I got very excited about it and also started digging into it a little bit. By coincidence, I discovered that Google had previously released a engine called Tesseract, which is the current state-of-the-art OCR. OCR is short for Optical Character Recognition, or in other words, finding text in images. This means that Google provides you with a program that actually has the text recognition already trained into it, and you don't need to do any of the complicated machine learning stuff yourself. So Tesseract is basically like this very good buddy of yours that you can just tell, hey, here's my picture, please analyze it for text. And then Tesseract will be like, sure mate, then just does its work and passes you back the text that it founds in the image. It's that easy. So the next time I stumbled upon a tutorial with uncopyable code, I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if I had some sort of tool to copy the text directly from that video? My first thought was to write some sort of external program, but then I realized it would be much easier to just create a Chrome extension. Kind of like Grammarly, if you're familiar with it. A little browser plugin that anybody who has a Chrome browser can download right from the web store, so I don't need to do any hosting myself. So that was my rough idea for the solution. A Chrome extension combined with machine learning that can recognize any type of text in your browser. So far the idea, let's look into how I implemented it. So before I started implementing the whole thing, I wanted to validate that my idea how I had imagined it would actually work. So I tried to find the simplest way to recreate the actual use case before writing a lot of code. That use case meant take a picture with code, put it into Tesseract, get a copy of text, and then feel fabulous. So to verify my idea, I downloaded the Python version of Tesseract, took a screenshot from a YouTube tutorial, and had Tesseract read in the screenshot. And the result was, uh, well, not super good. So was my idea not actually possible? Surely that couldn't be. So I started researching. When looking through research papers and countless blog articles, I found proven what I have been suspecting about machine learning for quite some time. Machine learning is not that magic, all-knowing, godlike thing it is usually portrayed by in the media. Machine learning is essentially just very good at performing one specific task in a predefined set of circumstances. And that's the point. Predefined circumstances. Machine learning is only very good at performing the task if those circumstances are exactly like the ones it has been trained on. Now for Tesseract, these circumstances are, for example, the text has to be black on white background, the text cannot be rotated, and the image should not have a lot of noise. Now in my case, I knew a lot of those pictures would be code snippets, so that meant dark background and colored text, which is not very good for Tesseract. So now I had to answer the question, if I would be able to transform the code snippet picture into a dark text on white background, could Tesseract actually analyze it? So I put the picture that I used before into Photoshop and adjusted it so it became dark text on white background, then put it into Tesseract and it actually worked. I was able to get a pretty accurate result. This means that my proof of concept was validated. If I could adjust the image to fit Tesseract, it would actually analyze it correctly. 
So proof of concept? Check. So thanks to my research before, I knew that I would have to make adjustments to the image. So the structure for my extension would look like the following. Take a screenshot, have the user crop the image, make adjustments to the image, send it to Tesseract, and then display the text for the user so he can copy it. So I started diving into creating my first Chrome extension and found out that it was actually quite easy. So I'm going to spare you the details, but a Chrome extension is essentially just JavaScript with a few extra Chrome features, which is perfect for me. So the first task was to take a screenshot. Now, Chrome has a feature called tabs, which makes this pretty easy. So I just had to call a simple API function in Chrome and voila! Now when somebody clicked the extension button, a new tab would open with a screenshot of the tab that was opened before. So far, so good. The next step was to enable the user to crop the image. Now this one was a little bit more complex. Sure, I could have just used a pre-made cropper plugin, but I knew that I would have to have full control over my cropper later on. And also, if you always just use plugins, where's the fun in programming anyway? So I decided to make my own. So I used the HTML canvas to paint on the screenshot that I just took and then wrote quite a few lines of code, which I'm gonna spare you the details on here. I essentially used the HTML canvas to paint on the screenshot. Then I wrote quite a few lines of JavaScript, which I'm gonna spare you here. But if you're interested in that, there are a lot of good tutorials out there how to build a image cropper with plain JS. And after some tweaking, I ended up with something looking like this. Next up was the adjusting part. So I knew that many of the screenshots would have a dark background with light colored text, which made me think that inverting the image would probably be a useful thing to do. Inverting an image basically means that you take each pixel out of it and turn its color into its opposite color. How does that work, you ask? Well, let's have a quick look at the RGB color space. Every picture that you see on the web is made out of millions of little pixels. Pixels are essentially just a colored square. The color of that square is determined by its RGB values. RGB stands for red, green and blue. So each pixel has a red, green and blue value. For example, this color is made out of these three values. These values will always be between 0 and 255. 255 is the max value for a RGB value. Now if you were to adjust the green value to something a little bit higher, the pixel color would actually turn into something more greenish. So depending on how you arrange those values, the pixel color will change. Now if you want the opposite or inverse value of these colors, so I would go 255 minus the value it was before. The result I will then assign to each channel. The newly calculated pixel would then be the inverse pixel of the one before. Got it? No? Well, that's not too bad. It's not that important to understand the rest of this video, so stay tuned. Now another filter I wanted to apply is the threshold. So as said before, Tesseract likes pictures with dark text on white background. Now after just inverting the picture, the text is not likely to have a very dark color yet. That is where a threshold can help. Essentially what it does is binarize a picture. Binarizing a picture basically means putting all pixels in two different groups. And then after that, turning one of the groups all white and the other group all black. So after applying a threshold filter, the picture will be left with only two colors as you can see here. You can also imagine it like this. Imagine you have a police officer which is responsible for putting cars into two different groups. So you have group one, which you're gonna call the lower group, and you have group two, which you're gonna call the higher group. And then you give this police officer a threshold value. In this case, we're gonna take 125. So now every time a car comes along, which represents a pixel, the police officer is gonna check what value that pixel or car has. So in this case, it's 120. So that means it's below our threshold value. That means that car is going into the lower group. Now, the next car comes along and that car has a value of 220, which is higher than our threshold value, which means it goes into the higher group. Now, that happens with all the pixels in the whole picture. After all pixels are grouped, they are then turned in either black 
or white. This will result an image like this to turn into something like this. Now for my text problem this will enable me to do this. As you can see here this enables me to separate the text from the background quite clearly. Now this looks like some text that Tesseract can actually analyze. And the best thing about it, it is actually quite easy to implement it in JavaScript. This little piece of code is all it needed. Now the only thing left to do was to send the finished picture to Tesseract. So my initial idea was to have Tesseract running on a server in the backend that receives the pictures and then sends back the text. Therefore I quickly set up a little backend with Flask in Python. All that backend needed to do was receive the image, put it into Tesseract and then return the text. This turned out to be a super simple task, so it only took me about 27 lines of code. So when I sent it the picture, Tesseract returned the text and it was actually looking pretty good so far. However, while this did work, it did also come with a problem. Tesseract is not exactly running very fast. Depending on the kind of picture you send it and how much text is in it, it can take up to multiple seconds. That does not sound much at first, but if you imagine that I would have only a couple of hundred users and all of them would request at the same time, this would actually result in one user waiting minutes for their text to be analyzed. And yeah, sure, I can already hear the more experienced developers of you say, oh, but you can run things in parallel and you can put lambda functions here and there and then do a load balancer and... Sure, I can, but guess what? I ain't paying for that. So this app is gonna be for free. So in the best case scenario, I ain't paying anything for it either. And that is where Tesseract JS comes into play. Tesseract JS is basically the same as Tesseract, just running in the JavaScript language. Now this gives me one very strong advantage, which is I can run it in the browser. And the browser is on the client side. That means I don't need to buy or rent any servers. I can just do all the work on the client side. However, at that point, I must say that Tesseract JS is actually a little bit less accurate than the full blown version. However, I think for my use case, which is for a free app, that is just fine. And so that's what I did. I added Tesseract JS into it instead of sending a request to the backend. I just included the Tesseract JS library and then had it analyze the image for me, which was pretty easy, only took me like five lines of code and it worked out just fine. Now let's look at the result of the whole thing. I think it came out pretty decent after all. Depending on the picture you are using, you can get very accurate results. And I was actually able to use it quite a few times for myself when I was watching tutorials. However, it definitely isn't perfect. Depending on the kind of font that you are using, Tesseract can actually come up with some very wacky results. So when you use it, make sure to prepare the picture as good as you can. Now, for the future, there are more sophisticated versions of Tesseract that you can actually train exactly for coding fonts. For the use case of this free app, I'm not gonna do that. However, if this app does get a lot of users, I might actually add a paid feature where you can access the Cloud Google Vision API, which is a lot faster and also a lot more accurate. If that is something that interests you, let me know in the comments down below. I would definitely like to implement that for you. And that's it. That's how I made CopyMate. Now, if you want to use that app, you can find it in the Chrome store. It's called CopyMate. I also put a link in the description down below, so you can find that in the Chrome store there. If you are trying it out, I would greatly appreciate if you could leave me a five-star review. If you have any requests for that app, let me know in the comments down below. If it's not too much effort, I might actually be updating that app in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comments down below. And if you want to see more of those videos, please subscribe. Also, you can find me on Twitter under this handle right here. So that's it for today and thank you for tuning in. Firemind out.